So we are now at the second section of chapter 2 slash 33 and we will be looking at absolute versus comparative advantage. These are two of the key uh, topics that we have to learn in trade theory. They're very important to understanding the differences between countries and producers. So let's start with absolute advantage. Absolute advantage is a producer who could produce a larger quantity of a good than others given the same amount of resources is said to have an absolute advantage in producing that good. The same amount of resources could be the same amount of workers, the same amount of time, the same amount of energy, different examples like this. In this simple example, same amount of resources, we're simply looking at both the farmer and the rancher and we're saying that they're both devoting the same amount of time to keep things even. Therefore, if both farmer and rancher devote all eight hours to the production of vegetables, we've seen from the table before that the farmer can produce eight kilograms of vegetables on a given day, whereas the far rancher can produce 16 kilograms of vegetables on a given day. Therefore, the rancher has an absolute advantage at producing vegetables. On the other hand, if both the farmer and rancher devote all eight hours to the production of meat, farmer can produce eight kilograms kilograms of meat, rancher can produce 24 kilograms of meat, rancher has an absolute advantage at producing meat as well. So a note here that I would add is that it is possible for one producer to have absolute advantage in both goods. It is possible. It doesn't have to be the case. It could have been the case that the rancher has an absolute advantage in producing one good, whereas the farmer has an absolute advantage in producing the other. But it is possible for one person to have higher efficiency than another one. So you could think between countries, you can have a situation where one country is simply more efficient than the other one, produces more quantity of goods and different things like that. We'll see the implications for trade in an instant. But if I think about this, what we've just looked at here, calculating the difference, you could also see it graphically with the graph we had a little earlier. If we look at this graph, well, to determine absolute advantage of meat production or vegetable production, all we'd have to look at is from all the producers here, we only have two which one has the intersection point which is highest on this curve. So we look farmer first and oh, we got rancher here. This is the PPF of the rancher. Therefore, rancher has the absolute advantage in producing meat. And here, if I do the same thing for vegetables, whoop, I got a farmer and then the rancher is further out. Therefore, the rancher could produce more vegetables if it doesn't produce any meat than the farmer. Therefore, it has absolute advantage in producing vegetables as well. So now let's look at the other main topic, which will be the most used one, which deals with this idea of comparative advantage. A producer has a comparative advantage if the producer can produce the good at a lower opportunity cost given the same amount of time slash resources. Early on, I said that opportunity cost has to do with the slope. Well, here we could also look at it from a trade-off perspective. So I'm just going to do this here first, and then we're going to refer to the slide. But I might be interested in knowing what's the trade-off for one meat? One meat. Well, I know that the farmer can have either eight or eight. So the trade-off of eight meat for the farmer is equal to eight vegetable for the farmer. This is for the farmer. Therefore, I want to know this from a one meat basis, makes it easier to compare with the other one. So I'm going to divide both sides by eight. So for the farmer, I know that one meat, the trade off of it is I have to give up one vegetable. And this is where my slope of one came from. And if I look from the rancher's perspective, well, on a given day, he could either produce 24 meat or 16 vegetables. So this or here kind of became an equal in the sense that the amount of time used to producing 24 meat is equal to the same amount of time as producing 16 vegetables. 
So therefore, if I want to get it on a per meat basis, divide both sides by 24. And here I know one meat. If I divide the top and bottom by eight, I'll get two thirds. So I know that for producing one unit of meat, the rancher only gives up two thirds of a unit of vegetables. Therefore, if I compare the two, I could see that for one unit of meat produced, the rancher has the lowest opportunity cost of producing meat because it only has to give up two thirds vegetables instead of one. So if I were to look at the slide here, this is pretty much what is mentioned. Going through the process, dividing by both sides, and we could see that the opportunity cost of producing one kilogram of meat, two third vegetables, since the rancher has a lower opportunity cost, therefore has comparative advantage in producing meat. Now, if we were to go through the process as well, I invite you guys to pause this video for a second and try to do it for yourself. Try to calculate the opportunity cost of producing one unit of vegetables for both the farmer and the rancher. So you would again have to set these equal and then want to isolate this one unit of vegetable and see what the trade-off is. But if I were to... So here, right now we could see now that if we look from the vegetable perspective for the farmer, the opportunity cost of producing one kilogram of vegetables will be one kilograms of meat. And for the rancher, it's going to be one kilograms of vegetables will be one and a half kilograms of meat. Therefore, the farmer has a lower opportunity cost and comparative advantage in producing vegetables. So you can notice that the rancher has comparative advantage in producing meat, the farmer has comparative advantage in producing vegetables, even though the rancher had absolute advantage in producing both goods. So here's another note I would like to write out is it is impossible, and I just want to underline it, to have comparative advantage in both goods. Okay. As soon as you have a small trade-off for producing one good, it means that to producing the other good, leads to a bigger trade-off. So early on, we had a trade-off of one to two thirds for the rancher, and now we have one to 1.5. For the mathematical people here, 1.5 is three halves. So it's the inverse of two thirds. So as soon as one becomes smaller, the trade-off becomes smaller for one of the two goods, it has to become greater for the other one. The only way to have a situation where we don't have this uh, difference in opportunity cost would be if the farmer could produce on a one to one basis, the rancher could produce on a two for two basis. Well, in both of these cases, they're trading off at the same ratio. And in that case, none of them would have a lower opportunity cost. Therefore, none of them would have comparative advantage, or you could say both of them have it, but there's no real difference. Um, so in practice, you could think that except for this extremely, extremely, extremely rare scenario, it's impossible to have both uh, goods have comparative advantage in both goods. Therefore, it's either going to be one of the two producers will have comparative advantage in one and the other one in the other one. So if you've calculated right for the one of the two, you probably know the answer for the other. So since I was pretty confident with my answer saying that Rancher had a comparative advantage in producing meat, I'm pretty confident in believing that the farmer will have a comparative advantage in producing vegetables. Okay. So what are the implications? Well, the implications that each person should specialize in producing the good that they have comparative advantage in and producing and then trade with each other. So the next step will be to calculate the potential terms of trade. These will be done in the next example. But as is mentioned here, it's uh, there's always going to be a mutually beneficial exchange. There's always possibility for an offer that both of the people will uh, will benefit from. It doesn't have to be this way in practice uh, through some form of bullying. It might be differently, but 
Uh, normally, you would expect that if someone's accepting a certain offer, it's because it makes them happier, makes them better. And in this case here, we will see that uh, because we have different opportunity costs, even though there's one country that may have absolute advantage in producing both goods, there is always this possibility that the trade that will make both parties benefit.